Hi everybody, we're with Grandview University and we're here for College Week to answer any questions you may have um, in regards to the application process, um, just being a student at Grandview, anything in general. Um, I'm Shannon Michelson, I'm the enrollment counselor for the College for Professional and Adult Learning. So I do a lot of the enrollment and recruitment for our adult programs, our accelerated evening and weekend programs. And my name is Michael Norris, I am the Director of Graduate Studies at Grandview, so any questions that you may have in regards to um, a master's degree to graduate education, I'll be happy to answer. And also we want to note that our answers will be typed and um, shown live as we go through as well, so you can see those in text format as well. So we'll go ahead and get started. Um, our first question is, how do you apply for admissions to Grandview? Um, I have a little bit of a different process than Michael, so we'll both kind of hit this question as well. Um, to apply to the College for Professional and Adult Learning, um, you would apply online. We have a really nice uh, process where you can apply online for free. It doesn't take too long. Um, you can do that, and then once that is complete, then um, that's when your transcripts need to come in. Um, you'll work pretty closely with me in the process, and so I'll provide you any information that you need in that process. But um, your transcripts will come in, and we'll do the evaluation on those. Um, if you have, we'll allow up to 66 credits from a community college, and we um, allow about 30 credits for technical vocational credits. Um, for folks with less than 60 college credits, we require official high school transcripts as well. So those will have to be sent in, official, sealed envelope, um, all that to our admissions office. Um, we also, if you have less than 24 college credits, require an ACT score. Um, what's nice about Grandview is if you haven't taken the ACT and you're coming in as a transfer student or an adult learner, um, we have services on campus where you can take tests there on campus scheduled with, with our staff, um, and that will replace the ACT score. Um, they're a little bit different. There's two different tests depending on if you've been out of high school for three years, and there's also another option if you've been out for more than three years. So um, that's pretty much the process. Once um, all those things come in um, and kind of aligned with that would be your financial aid. You'd be filling out your financial aid, um, your FAFSA, and doing that as well. But basically once that's all in, we get students admitted within a week up to I mean, maybe two weeks. It just kind of depends on how long it takes to get those transcripts in. So that's pretty much the... The, the deal for the admissions for the CPAL. Yeah, and for the graduate program, it's pretty straightforward. You fill out an online application. Um, you'll submit a cover letter. Uh, we, we call it a cover letter. Sometimes you'll hear at graduate programs either a personal statement or personal essay, so that's the equivalent. Um, three letters of recommendation. Your transcripts, obviously, from your um, undergraduate institutions. Uh, your resume. And then you'll also have a uh, you'll also have a personal uh, interview with with myself or someone from the, the graduate program. Um, once your application is complete, we send it on to the graduate council, who's also the admissions committee for um, the graduate program. And um, once it's complete, we usually get back to you with within a couple of weeks um, as far as uh, an, an admission answer. And kind of um, another thing to add to my answer, um, I'm not sure if we have a question on this coming up soon, but as far as um, transferring in an AA or an AS, if you come in with an AA, with an associate's degree, um, that usually um, makes up for most of the general education, the core credits that you need at Grandview. Um, there are usually are about maybe three that you would have to take with us. Um, we have a religion requirement, and then we also have a capstone class. It's a seminar class um, that's required of everyone that goes to Grandview. And there's actually no, um, there's no substitution. You have to take that at Grandview. So that would just be, that would just be one, one um, class that you would definitely have to take. If you've taken a religion class in your previous, uh, your previous school, that would come over. Um, but usually with that AA, you're pretty much set on the general education um, requirements aside from maybe two or three classes. The AS is a little bit different, but um, as I mentioned, once your transcripts come in, we can. Um, do an evaluation on that and let you know exactly exactly what that looks like. All right, so I guess we're ready for another question. All right, um, our next question is from Paul. Uh, the question is, what is the difference between Grandview's Business Leadership Master's degree and an MBA? Well, I, I'll take that one, being the director of, of our graduate studies um, program. 
Um, the the major difference that, that I see is is um, in our uh, master's degree in um, in leadership um, compared to compared to the MBA is that it's um, the the class the courses themselves are um, much more on kind of the title of of the degree being innovative leadership. So so a lot of um, um, leadership. Um, conflict management, interpersonal workplace dynamics, um, innovation. Uh, there, there are a lot of um, courses like that where um, it's it's much more about the the leadership skills and not so much um, the technical skills. We do have um, one particular course that, um, kind of in a nutshell, covers more of the the technical skills, being um, you know accounting. Uh, in, in finance and such, but but our, our program is really set up to um, to to help um, people in specifically in the, the business track to to help them um, develop or further develop their their leadership skills, and hopefully that will um, you know that will translate over to um, to their workplace setting. And what we found in our first um, first couple years of existence in, in graduate education, specifically in um, in our business track, is that that our degree is is very uh, very much an applied degree, meaning that that it is that what what our uh, students are learning in the classroom, they're they're able to take to um, to the workplace setting. Um, as many of my students have have said. They go to class on Tuesday night, and they can apply what they're learning on Wednesday morning. So, um, so in in theory, that's um, that's how we, you know, that's kind of what we founded the degree on is being an applied degree. Um, and what we're finding out is our um, our students are um, are seeing that that firsthand. So, so that's our the big difference between. Um, between our applied degree and, and an MBA where it's much more of the technical, either accounting, finance, marketing, things like that. All right. Um, our next question, uh, do you accept transferred credits from AIB? We do. We actually, I work uh, mostly with the students who are transferring in with AIB credits. They usually transfer over pretty seamlessly. Um, it just kind of depends on what you're transferring in for, what, you, what major you're looking at. But we do have several AIB uh, transfers, and um, that's one that does uh, transfer in pretty seamlessly. And something to note for anybody who has just recently logged on, we are um, our answers are being typed along with um, our video answers. So if you want to follow along with that as well, or check back for more detail on, on anything we've answered, feel free to do that as well. All right, um, our next question is from it's from Jana Jana um, how do I go about having my transcripts reviewed to see which classes I need for my bachelor's degree it's a really good question um, what we'll do is uh, we, we require official transcripts to admit you to the university um, that's usually the most efficient way to find out what your evaluation is um, we have really great academic advisors who can review your transcripts if you're coming from um, a local community college, maybe um, a, co a college that we work with on a more regular basis. Um, but like I said, we do require the official transcript. So once those come in um, and we have all of your transcripts, um, another thing that we also do to kind of track and make sure that we're getting everything we need is our admissions team will run a report on our end um, with your information from your application. And that'll kind of tell us any school that you've been registered with, that you've um, earned credits with. So we can also help you there. So you can always just do your application online. Then we can kind of um, follow up with you and let you know exactly what we need. Um, so once those official transcripts arrive and we've got everything in, um, <coughs> excuse me, our registrar, <coughs> she will uh, put together your official evaluation. And what she does with it from there is then uh, passes that along to your academic advisor who, once you're admitted, um, you'll be introduced to. I'll introduce you to whoever your academic advisor will be. And then... Uh, they'll work with you to let you know what you need to take and maybe if there's prereqs, um, how your schedule, how you should schedule those. All right, our next question is from Marcus. 
uh, do you require students to live on campus for any amount of time or can a student live with parents on the east side? They can, um, they can live at home, um, I believe, that for the first year. Okay, if it's an immediate family member, you can live at home. I apologize. When I went to Grandview, I had to live on campus my first year. I didn't have a choice. Um, so, yes, you can. Um, we also have several transfer or commuter students as well. Um, Grandview is growing, though. It's becoming um, increasingly a residential college. So that's um, something to maybe keep in mind as well. Any petition to live at home? The official process, if you do want to live at home, um, is to um, you have to file a petition. So that's something that you'll work with. Um, our administrative staff to to do that, but that is an option. And I'd also like to point out that we we do have over 800 um, undergraduate um, residents on on campus and and some fabulous um, residence halls. So um, living on campus certainly does um, does have its um, positive attributes as as far as the campus life and, and things like that. And maybe something else to tag on to that is we have about. 800 residential units um, might be less than that, but as far as beds, there's about eight, um, around 800 um, that we do have on campus now. All right. Um, our next question is from Bill. What continuing education programs do you have to offer for working adults, degrees, and when do they meet? Um, we actually offer 16 majors in our accelerated evening weekend format, and I can kind of list these out for you. Um, I encourage if anyone has any other specific questions or you want details on the sort of lengthy answers um, to contact us um, and we can provide this for you in a little bit easier format, maybe a PDF or some sort of other flyer. But the programs that we offer in our accelerated weekend program are accounting, business administration, and our business administration is a little different. Um, it has concentrations in it. So you'll pick from either finance, <coughs> human resource management, marketing, management or real estate. We have a criminal justice, um, history, human services, liberal arts, management information systems, nursing, um, specifically specifically an RN to BSN program that we offer. Um, the nursing, the general nursing is, um, there's several classes that are offered during the day. So um, that's something to kind of take into consideration. But if you're coming in, if you're transferring in with your RN, um, you can do the entire program in our uh, week in our evening program. Um, it's once a night, um, once a week. Um, we also have the organizational studies. This one is a little bit more flexible with people coming in with um, vocational technical credits. Um, usually, um, th things they've taken at DMAC um, that might not go towards a specific major. Um, but the organizational studies allows about 16 vocational credits, so that's something to take into consideration too. Um, the concentrations with the organizational studies are business, criminology, or organizational leadership. Um, then we also have a political studies major, which has a couple concentration options. You can either do pre-law or you can do public administration. Um, we, ha we also have psychology, we have religion, service management, and then um, we have some certificate programs that we offer. Um, not necessarily the bachelor's degree, but certificate programs. Um, these include art therapy, entrepreneurship, human resource management, real <clears throat> estate, Spanish essentials, and then post-baccalaureate certificates in accounting and uh, management. Um, and then finally, another program that we offer um, are teacher endorsements. So those are, um, those are other options. Um, our most popular right now, um, just got a cohort going, is our driver's ed program. We have a driver's ed program that um, teaches folks how to be the teacher, how to teach driver's ed, not necessarily the, the driver's ed program that you take to get your license. All right, our next question is from Todd. How do I apply for admissions? Um, kind of touched on a little bit earlier. Um, you apply online. We have um, an online application that you can complete. Um, pretty simple, there's no cost. Um, you can find that on our website. To apply for the College for Professional and Adult um, Learning that I recruit and manage for, that's under um, part-time students. Um, you can go under there. There's an apply link. Um, and then for traditional students, there's um, future students 
link that can um, show you where to apply. Um, as far as the College for Professional and Adult Learning, which we shortened to CPAL, um, CPAL um, applications, um, you'll send your transcripts, your, offic your official transcripts will come into us. We require official transcripts from any college or university that you've attended previously. Um, and then in conjunction with that, you'll be completing your FAFSA. And once, once those pieces are in, um, we, we, get you, we review your application and get you going. Um, something to mention if you're applying to, be, to do an endorsement with us, um, we require a copy of your teaching license. And then if you are applying for our RN to BSN program, we would require a copy of your nursing license. And for the, the graduate program, it's, um, it's a pretty simple and straightforward process. Um, you, you can apply online. That's the easiest way to do it, the, the application form itself. Um, we require your official transcripts from your um, undergraduate institutions. Uh, three letters of recommendation, um, a cover letter, and, um, and your resume. Um, and one thing, I, as I was um, discussing this earlier in the chat, one thing I did uh, fail to mention was um, another re requirement is the GRE, GMAT, or we do have an optional essay. So if, if someone hasn't taken the GRE or GMAT and is interested in our program, um, we have an in-house um, optional essay that, that they can take. So I'm glad Todd answered that or asked that question so I could clarify on, on one of our um, admissions requirements. Uh, next question. Our next question is from Mackenzie. Mackenzie, um, does Grandview offer daycare? We do not. No, we do not, we do offer, not daycare. offer daycare. Uh, okay. Next. Our next question is from Jay. Uh, what majors do you have? Um, we have. Uh, we have the majors that we offer in our, um, I'll just kind of run through them real quick again. Um, the majors that we offer in our, in our um, evening classes are the accounting, the business administration, the criminal justice, history, human services, liberal arts, uh, management information systems, nursing, um, specifically the RN to BSN. Um, we also have the organizational studies, we have paralegal studies, um, political studies, psychology, religion, service management, and then um, certificates uh, include art therapy, art entrepreneurship, human resource management, real estate, Spanish essentials, and um, post-baccalaureate certificates in accounting and management, as well as um, some teaching endorsements that we offer. And then at the... the um traditional undergraduate level, there are uh, 38 um, majors that, that are offered on campus. And I would encourage you to, um, to go onto our website, grandview.edu, and um, click on the ad admissions and, and um, a list of all 38 programs will, will be there. So. 16 of those are offered um, in total in the, in the accelerated evening weekend program. All right, our next question is from Gander. Um, do you offer online classes? We're starting to move into the online. Um, we're starting to move into the online world. We have, and that's happening um, in the business uh, business section. Um, for instance, this summer we've got a couple of classes. We've got a marketing class and we've got a business law one class that you can take online um, during our um, I think session five or session six uh, term this summer. Um, our nursing program, our RN to BSN, is a blended learning. Um, there's other there's some other blended learning options in other CPAL majors, um, but that RN to BSN program takes into account that blended learning piece. So um, Grandview is um, majority of our courses, majority of our uh, majors are in class style class um, settings, um, but they do but there are some options for blended learning. So um, as I mentioned with the RN to BSN, you could come to class for um, towards the beginning, and then as you kind of get used to things as um, as the semester um, goes on, then there's some online pieces that you can do as well. And for the, the graduate program, we, we do not offer any online classes. And, and that was actually, um, we actually did that deliberately. We felt uh, that, that this particular graduate program, um, the students would, 
would get the most out of the classes interacting um, in the classroom with with their professor and with um, and even more so with with their classmates um, and and really gaining knowledge from each other and and um, and what we found in the graduate program and and why we probably won't offer online classes in this particular master's degree is that um, our students really do use the classroom as as almost like a, a laboratory for um, as as I re referred to earlier, um, it's an applied degree. So so they're bringing in real world their you know issues that they're dealing with, whether development in in their particular um, area or, or um, you know whatever the case may be. Um, they're able to to bring that into the classroom and um, and really work work through some things and, and we've had students who have developed projects that started in in um, a particular uh, class and in, in thinking of a particular theory and it really um, blossomed in, in, into um, a project that they brought to their supervisor and and um, and some of those some of those projects um, have been implemented um, so so in the graduate program we feel it's very important that um, that 100% of, of their experiences um, interacting with um, with their classmates and, and the professor. All right, so our next question is from Jen. What kind of services are there for students at night? Um, one of the things that CPAL really prides itself in is being kind of a one-stop shop. Um, we have advisors who have night hours as well. We've got some um, advisors who are there till about 8 o'clock at night. Um, just because we know that uh, several of our students are full-time working adults, um, potentially have families, children to get to places. So um, basically anything you would need down to paying your tuition, um, picking up books. We have um, arrangements made with the bookstore um, during one of our orientations where they stay open later so that we can get you your books. Um, our uh, library and Rasmussen building have writing labs and um, tutors that can help you. Um, with anything you need, um, and they have late um, hours as well. Um, as far as um, meeting with your advisor, you can even set up times to put your schedule together and register for classes later at night as well. Um, as far as getting your um, your parking pass or, um, <clears throat> or your ID, those sorts of things, um, we also, again, have, a, have a, an arrangement made um, during our orientations where you can do that in the evening as well. All right, our next question is from Taylor. All right, if I attend at night, how long would it take me to get a bachelor's degree? Um, again, another re really good question. Um, and just a side note for anyone who's logged in um, recently, our answers are all being um, typed out as well, so you can kind of follow us um, through that feed. Um, okay, so as far as how long would it take, it kind of depends on, it definitely depends, I should say, on what you're transferring in, how many credits you're transferring in, um, which ones we can accept. Um, we, with the AA, um, you know, if, if you're coming in with your general education, your general core classes taken care of, um, maybe about two, maybe three years. It depends on if you want to go full-time, if you want to go part-time. Um, with our format we offer, um, and I didn't mention, we, uh, we offer eight-week sessions, so in a traditional 16-week semester, you could do the first half, you could get two classes done there, you can get another two done in the second half of the session or semester, so um, full-time would be um, six credits or more per eight-week session, so 12 credits per semester, um, and then three to five would be part-time, so it just depends on how, what the caseload, the course load that you want to take on, um, and then as far as how many uh, credits you're transferring in. And I'll, I just want to jump in real quick. I know Taylor didn't ask about a master's degree, but um, for those of you who are curious on the length of our of our graduate program, it's um, it's just short of two years, between 21 to 23 months. Um, the the coursework itself is is uh, 21 months long, um, and it, we allow an, an additional two months for students to um, to work on their final capstone. So, so at the most, it, you're looking at um, 23 months. Okay. Um, our next question is from Pam, and her question is: I'm a 27 
27 year old mom and looking to complete my degree. Would I have to live on your campus? No, you do not. Um, transfer students, um, not at all. Um, I don't even know if we have um, a lot of adult learners uh, that live on campus, so that's definitely not a requirement at all. And we also have um, a Johnston campus as well. Um, we have a campus um, on the Camp Dodge site in the Freedom Center, so folks who are a little bit more um, north in that direction um, could take advantage of our of our Johnston campus as well. And while um, while we're on the topic of the Johnston, um, we do have some majors that you can complete entirely at the Johnston campus. Um, you would really only need to come to the main campus on the east side of Des Moines um, for maybe administrative things, um, for the business office, those sorts of things. Um, our director out there, though, is really great about helping students who um, need assistance with um, either paying, you know, doing business office things or student life things, um, doing that at Johnston as well. Um, but at the Johnston campus, you can do the business administration, the criminal justice, the liberal arts, the organizational studies, um, and the service management. You can do those entirely at the Johnston campus. So that's something um, to take into consideration as well. And just to piggyback on that with the graduate program, I do get questions quite often if, if we offer, um, for, for those who, who know we have a Johnston campus, they'll ask me if, if we offer graduate classes at the Johnston campus, and at, at this point in time, we do not. All of our all of our um, graduate courses are are offered on our main campus. All right. Our next question is from Jonathan. Is it too late to apply for the leadership masters for this coming fall? I'll take that one. No, um, it's not too late. Um, we we actually don't have a, a set um, deadline for um, admission into the to the graduate program. However, I would encourage you to, to start the process as soon as possible. Um, it does take a little bit of time, especially with those, um, those letters of recommendation. I always tell prospective students that um, that's the one thing that, that's out of your control. You, you can write your, your cover letter, you can write your essay, you can um, you know, get your, your transcripts um, requested to be sent to, to Grandview. It's those letters of recommendation. Um, that are out of your control. Um, so you want to make sure and, and stay on top of that. Um, but so so to, to answer your question, no, it's not too late. And, and if you do have any any questions for me, you can just go onto our website, uh, click on the um, graduate students and all of my contact information is on there. I'd be happy to help you with the application process. All right, our next question is from Colin. Does Grandview have more than one campus? Um, as we Mentioned, yes, we do. We have the Johnston campus as well. Um, that's specifically on the Camp Dodge um, site, um, Northwest 70th Street, I believe, um, just um, off the Merle Hay, off Merle Hay Road. Um, uh, it's got some, we've got um, some specific majors that you can do entirely out there, um, but that campus um, has its own director as well. Um, so Kelly is the director out there, and she's um, really great about um, being there later in the evening as well, so about eight o'clock. So um, if you need, you know, advising, academic advising assistance, um, you need business office assistance, um, need to pick up your books. Um, she has a really great program where you can order your books and have them delivered to the Johnston campus so that you can pick them up the first night of class there. That's another option as well. So um, the Des Moines campus on the east side, and then um, the east side of Des Moines, and then also the Johnston campus. All right, our next question is from Bill. What are the most popular undergrad programs at Grandview? I would say the most popular are probably the business. Um, also, nursing is a really big one as well. Do you have any to add to that? Education is, is, um, is very popular on campus. Um, Grandview um, produces some fabulous teachers that, that you see um, not only in the state but, but um, throughout the Midwest. So, I, um, yeah, I think those are... Those are three of the more popular ones. Um, uh, our art department is is absolutely fabulous too. So I know we'll probably we'll probably get some grief from some of our professors when we um, when we talk to them about not mentioning their programs. But yeah, those are those are some of the, the more popular programs on campus. And one of the great things about Grandview's location is that we are in the capital city, so our proximity to employers is a huge benefit. Um, specifically with our nursing program, several of our uh, students who do their um, clinicals 
in, at area um, hospitals or clinics on more often than not usually get asked to stay as an employee after they've earned their degree so there's a lot of success there as well um, and as far as the business being the most popular I mean the proximity to so many insurance companies and um, just other companies in the area is a is a plus as well all right our next question is from Greg and his question is <clears throat> uh, what do you have for the military and veterans um, as far as majors everything I mean um, you can select and everything um, what we do offer is a discount um, it's two hundred and fifty dollars per credit hour um, for for um, military um, and also their, their spouses their significant others can benefit from that as well um, the two hundred and fifty is in compare is uh, in comparison to the current um, CPAL rate is three hundred and seven dollars per credit hour as of fall 2012, this this next um, semester, that will be 319 per credit hour. Um, the 250 for the veterans will stay at that price. Our next question is from Thomas. Uh, what kind of financial aid can I get going? Um, can I get going part time at night? Um, what we do is you'll complete your FAFSA online, um, specifically the www.fafsa.ed.gov. There is one website, I think it's a .com or something, that's not where you want to go. So make sure you're at the .gov. Um, you'll complete your FAFSA there. Um, something to note is which academic year you're trying to get aid for. At this point, anyone who's looking to get aid for the summer will need to complete the 2011 <coughs> to 2012 academic year and they would use their 2010 tax return. If you're looking to get um, aid in the fall and um, basically fall of 2012 through um, the summer of 2013, you would complete your um, the 2012 to 2013 application using your 2011 tax return. Um, what happens from there, um, we have a special code that you'll put in. It's a code that I can share with you um, in your application process. Well, you'll put in the Grandview code so that all of your FAFSA information is sent directly to Grandview. And then what we do is we look at your application. And if you say if you said that you want to be part time or full time, then depending on what you've put um, for that, we'll put together an award letter. So um, our financial aid office will go through and put the package together, and the award letter will um, itemize what funding you're eligible for. Um, if you're eligible for any um, scholarships or work study kind of things like that um, we do offer a lifetime a lifelong learning scholarship it's offered once a year um, our deadline was actually April um, 9th so that just um, closed up but it's offered once a year and you can reapply for that and you can get up to four thousand um, dollars as a uh, adult learner there's some specifications on that you can find the information on our website um, for the details but that one is specific to our adult learners so um, about age 23 and up um, and then also um, some other specifics there you just complete a thousand word essay and there's an application that goes along with that and so um, it's a pretty simple process and um, it's a growing uh, scholarship that we offer and that's currently the the one scholarship that we do have specific to adult learners all right our next question is from Todd Why should I get my master's at Grandview instead of Drake or some other school? Well, it's it's really, um, I always tell prospective students, it's um, it really comes down to what you're wanting in a graduate degree. Um, our program, in our master's of science and in innovative leadership, and we have tracks in business, education, and nursing, um, it's, it's different enough in nature from um, the coursework and the structure that the majority of prospective students who I meet with um, go away knowing exactly what they'd be getting from a Grandview, Grandview master's degree. Um, and sometimes the, the coursework um, doesn't align um, with, with what they're wanting. If, if someone um, is, is an accountant and they're, they're wanting to um, get a master's, you know, develop their accounting skills, the, those technical skills, this, that, this isn't the, the reason 
um, that we developed our, our degree. Our, our degree is to, to, to develop leaders in, in central Iowa. Um, so I would, I would encourage you to, to look at the coursework. All of our, um, all of our classes are, are on our website along with the course descriptions. You'll see exactly the classes that you'll be taking over the, the course of the, the two years. You, you know you'll be, um, you'll know your schedule for the, essentially for the two years. Our, our courses, our master's courses are, are offered on Tuesday nights from 5.30 to 10 o'clock. Um, and, um, and so, so you'll know, you'll know the classes, you'll know the, the structure of them. And again, I, um, I would argue that, that our master's degree is um, one of the most versatile master's degrees um, that you could obtain, meaning um, you name your organization, and if you're wanting to take on leadership, skill, leadership positions or you're wanting to develop leadership skills to, to get that promotion and, and take on those um, responsibilities, um, I would argue that, um, that this particular degree crosses into any organization. We have, um, we have students coming from um, you know, for-profit, bigger corporations, um, nonprofits, governmental agencies, um, really um, all kinds of uh, all kinds of, of different um, uh, different work settings that they apply these classes um, in into their uh, into their daily work. Um, so so that would be um, you know the, I would encourage I would encourage you to um, to look at to look at Grandview and, and what we have to offer and, and certainly take a look around. At, at other graduate programs and see what um, see what the the best um, fit is for you. Okay, our next question is from Davis. How much is tuition at Grandview? Um, tuition for the CPAL program. Um, for anyone who may have just logged on recently, the CPAL program is short for the College for Professional and Adult Learning. Um, currently, our rate is at three hundred and seven dollars per credit hour. Um, that will be the price through the summer, and then coming this fall, it will be 319 per credit hour. Um, as we kind of mentioned as well, the 250 is offered to uh, military and spouses. Um, the full-time full -time, um, student, um, <clears throat> and this kind of depends on um, how you're how you're registered. Um, you could be you could be all um, you could be registered for maybe nine credits in our evening program, um, and then just take one day class, and that will actually bump you to the, um, to the daytime rate. Um, the daytime rate is 10,000, I should, okay, the daytime rate for the 2012-2013 academic year is 10,718 per semester. So that's what you're looking at if you're either a traditional student or you're a full-time um, CPAL student with just even just one day class. Um, and we can, I can explain the details on that further um, for anyone who might be interested. And for the, the graduate program for 2012-2013, um, our tuition per credit is $501. Um, so we, we feel that um, for, for a graduate degree um, in comparison to, to other um, programs in the area that we're very competitive when it, when it comes to um, tuition. All right. Our next question is from Jonathan. Is there an undergraduate grade point requirement to get into your grad school? Um, there, there isn't a, there is not a set requirement. Uh, however, we do like to see a, a 3.0 um, or above. Um, we, we do take a holistic approach to the application process. So the admission committee does um, consider all components. Um, so, so if if the GPA is um, is below the 3.0 um, threshold, I I certainly would um, encourage you to sit down with me or chat on the, the phone and, and see um, what the other what the other components of your application um, consist of. And, and many times it, it depends on the the undergraduate academic major also. Um, so so if you come from a particular program that is kind of no, is is known for being more difficult and and um, 
you know, much more difficult to get to get an A or a B. Um, certainly, the the admission committee uh, takes that into consideration too. So, so I always in I always encourage um, uh, prospective students to just just visit with me on the particulars of of the GPA and kind of where where you're coming from, and then we can go from there on whether or not um, you'll be a, a strong candidate for uh, for admission in our graduate program. And since we're on the topic of GPAs, um, for the CPAL to transfer in to our accelerated program, the GPA requirement's 2.0. Um, with RN to BSN, uh, the nursing program, it's 3.0. And one of the things you can do um, if you are below that 3.0 um, coming in as a nurse is you can take courses over the summer um, or in advance to applying. Nurses uh, complete an, a general application to our university um, the application that everyone completes, and then they also have a separate application for the nursing program. Um, before you um, before you submit your application for the nursing program, if you're at below 3.0, you can take courses at Grandview, and um, Grandview will look at those courses, and if you got a 3.0 or better on those, then they'll consider you for the nursing program. So that's something to take into account as well. All right, our next question is from Tracy. Tracy's question is, uh, your ad says you offer credit for life experience. What is that? We have uh, experiential learning opportunities. So what you would do is, first you'd meet your, with an academic advisor just to kind of get an idea if what you're, what you're thinking is going, to, is going to fit for what you're looking to um, use it for. So what you would do is you'll take a, it's, it's kind of like a liberal arts course. It's a one credit course um, and it'll kind of give you the idea, it'll prepare you for how to prepare these portfolios. So what you'll do is you'll take that one credit course um, at the one credit uh, rate, the, the 307 or the 319, whichever session you're starting in, and um, you would take that course and then from there you're able to do to do at least uh, up to 32 credits towards your major um, can be uh, done with the experiential learning piece. So once you've done that one credit class, then you can prepare portfolios, um, usually consisting of papers, um, and then uh, you kind of work directly with your advisor on those sorts of things. But um, those can be used to, um, say, an intro course in something that you've been working in for maybe 20 years. Um, if that's the case, then you can you can use that opportunity to bypass that course and get the full three credits um, by doing that portfolio. All right, our next question is from May. Can you tell me more about your nursing program? I've always been interested in a nursing career, but haven't taken the plunge. How does Grandview's nursing program compare to other Iowa schools? Our nursing program is, is, is wonderful. Um, our staff is fantastic. They work directly one-on-one -on -one from, even if you're just interested, you don't even know if you want to be a nurse, um, as far as um, just kind of that initial step, they'll work with you from that all the way through. Um, like I said, they have their own application process, so they've got they've got kind of their own um, their own world over there, um, and they focus 100% on their students. Um, one of the benefits, as I mentioned before, is the clinicals. Um, one of the benefits about being in Des Moines is our access to the Iowa Health Systems and several other uh, clinics and hospitals in the area that we uh, have a good relationship with. Um, our nurses do. Um, fairly well and um, have a pretty high success rate of being asked to stay where they do their clinicals, so that's a benefit as well. Um, we have a couple different programs. We've got your general, you come in as a freshman, you know, no credits, um, all the way through. We've got an accelerated RN to BSN program, um, and we also have um, an LPN to BSN uh, program that we do. Um, one thing that we're starting to do um, with Iowa Health is we're um, trying to work with them to launch a cohort specifically on their campus, on the Iowa Health, Iowa Health Systems campus, specifically Methodist, to offer um, a more specific, it would be all the same curriculum, but something that Iowa Health employees could do there on campus, on site, um, with our instructors, our curriculum, and um, we're in the process of getting that going, engaging um, interest in the area. All right, our next question is from Lance. Does Grandview have a law school? No, we um, we do not have a law school. Um, we uh, it's it's been interesting um, up until the 
1970s. Um, Grandview is just a junior college um, and then started offering, offering bachelor's degrees. And, um, and then in 2009 is when we launched our first, um, first graduate program, changed the name from Grandview uh, College to Grandview University. And uh, since then, it's been, um, it's been very exciting to be a part of uh, Grandview's first, first ever um, graduate program. So I don't foresee us ever having a law school. They are very expensive um, to, um, to, to start. Um, there have been very few law schools in the past um, 10 years or so that um, have started from scratch. So, so most of the law schools you see out there have, have been around for, for years and years. We do have pre-law, though. Yes. <laughs> um, Jonathan, uh, his question. What are the requirements to get into grad school at Grandview? What tests do I have to take? Um, it, I'll answer the, the test question first. Um, we, um, we don't require the, the GRE or GMAT if you do the, the optional essay that, that we offer. Um, if you decide to, to go the, um, for, our, for our nursing and education, if, if they take the GRE, and, and we'll accept that. Um, and for our business students, if, if they've already taken the, the GMAT or plan to take that, um, we, we accept that as well. Um, but as I had said, if, if, if you haven't taken either of the tests and, and, um, and are looking at a, a graduate, um, looking at Grandview, you wouldn't have to take either of those um, standardized tests, you could do a, the optional essay. And all the information on that uh, is on our website in our um, admission requirements as far as um, what's required of, of that um, particular essay. So, um, so that, that would be the answer to the, to the test requirements. As far as the overall requirements, you're just looking at a standard um, online application, um, your transcripts from your undergraduate institutions, Three letters of recommendation, as I said, the GRE, GMAT, or uh, optional essay. Um, your resume, did I, did I mention three letters of recommendation? Um, and uh, in a personal um, interview with, with myself or someone from, from our um, graduate, uh, graduate council. All right. And one thing to note, I know we're almost done, but um, all of our answers are also being fed um, through text on the screen so you can follow that as well. Um, our next question is from Amy. <clears throat> My son is only nine, but I'm curious, when do parents and kids tend to start looking into different schools, taking tours, um, and exploring financial aid? Well, I, I can, I can um, speak to that, and um, it's been quite a few years, but I was once an admissions counselor. Um, it seems to be getting earlier and earlier that, that parents and, and um, kids start the process. Um, back when I was an admissions counselor, um, you know, most of the time it was senior year that they started to look, um, but um, we would have a, um, in many schools, um, including Grandview, have, um, you know, like a, a junior visit day. Um, where juniors get involved, but you're, you'll see more and more um, freshmen and sophomores starting to um, starting to to look at, look at schools. Um, but again, for for the late the late bloomers and the and, um, ones who um, you know decide to to start the start the process their senior year, they're they're certainly um, certainly not behind. All right. Our next question is from Bethany. All right. Bethany's question is, what kind of financial aid is there for someone who wants to go back to school part-time at night? Um, I, one, of the, one of the scholarships that we do offer, um, it's specific to adult learners, and um, there's a few different requirements. The young, you have to be 23 or older. Um, and there's there's some specifics. There's uh, more information on our on our website about about the specifics on that. But um, that one um, is actually from a donor, um, uh, and his 
the specific scholarship was for adult learners, and he wanted to give people the opportunity to go back to school to um, further their education, um, regardless of their 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 situation, if they're if they're parents or if they have full time jobs, that sort of thing. Um, that to apply for that, you would complete a thousand word essay, and there's also an application that goes along with that. Um, and that is once a year. You can apply. You can reapply for it, even if you receive it once. You can reapply for that, and you can get up to four thousand dollars a year um, through that. All right. Um, our next question is from Nancy. <clears throat> What's your average class size at Grandview? Our average class size is seventeen, at least for the for the traditional. Um, for the CPAL, for the evening classes, it kind of ranges. Um, probably not too much less, um, but I teach a couple classes and they're about 10, um, so it, they're definitely smaller classes there. And for the, the graduate program, we certainly keep with the, the philosophy of, of Grandview University as a whole, and our class sizes are, are relatively small. We actually operate, the, the graduate program oper operates on a cohort model, meaning all the students start in a particular year at the, the same time. So we have a fall start for, for our cohort. Um, and generally we'll have around 20 to um, 23 students in, in a particular cohort. Um, and then they progress um, together. The, the business education and nursing students start the program together in the core. They complete the first 14 credit hours um, in, in the core and then they split off into their individual tracks and complete the, the final 26 credit hours um, in their track. So there, it's a large group, um, the, the 20 to 23 or so um, in the initial cohort, and then their cohort gets a, gets, um, a little smaller in that, um, in that 10 to, to 15 student range um, when they get into their track. All right, our next question is from Jen. <clears throat> I have a bunch of college credits from a couple of places. Will Grandview take them? <clears throat> um, as I mentioned, we do require official transcripts for, ad for admission. Um, so once those come in, we'll determine um, what we can and can't take. Um, as far as the type of credits, if it's a vocational or a technical credit, um, our organizational studies major um, will accept those. Um, all of, most of our other majors, um, we would give you some credit for those, but they wouldn't go towards um, any of your, towards the major requirements. Um, it just mainly depends on once our registrar receives all of your official transcripts and does the evaluation, um, how that works. Something that's really nice that people can kind of check out is we have articulation agreements with um, some area community colleges and other universities in the area. Um, that can be found on our website as well. And that'll detail um, down to specific class, um, which class at another institution will transfer over for specific classes with us. Um, we have a very extensive articulation agreement with DMAC, so um, you can log on to our website and take a look at that, and that'll tell you what you'll get credit for at Grandview for what you've taken at another school. All right, our next question is from Andrew. Uh, does Grandview offer training to become a driver's ed instructor? We do. Um, it's actually um, a really great class, and the format is really nice too. Um, it is you take it's nine credits, and um, you'll take a driver's ed one and a driver's ed two, and then you'll take a traffic safety course. The driver's ed one and two courses are offered two times a year, and the traffic safety is offered one time a year during the May session. Um, driver's ed one is offered. Um, it's a Friday and Saturday for about a month, and what you do is you'll be in class from 6 to 9 p.m. on Friday, and then again on Saturday from 8 to about 2.30. And then the second class, the driver's ed 2, that you'll take at the same time as the driver's ed 1 is by arrangement. That's where you're in the car, you're with your instructor, you're, you're learning um, the ins and outs of that piece. So that's by arrangement. You'll work with um, our instructor uh, on when it works for you, when it works for him. We have several people that commute in on the weekends to take the driver's ed program. Um, we've got people from around the state. Um, that take this and so with that kind of condensed weekend format it's pretty easy to knock those classes out and then the traffic safety course which is offered once a year in May um, that's the final three <coughs> courses that you or final three credits um, the final course that you would take to get your endorsement um, 
that is offered, like I said, in May, and that is kind of that same Friday, Saturday, about a month long, um, 6 to 9 p.m. at night on Friday, and then 8 to 2.30 p.m. on Saturday. Um, you can do just the first two classes, the driver's ed one and two. If you take those, that will get you your behind the wheel certificate. Um, that allows you to, to be an instructor in the car. Um, if, you if you want your endorsement, which you have to be a licensed teacher. Um, application process requires your co a copy of your teaching license as well. Um, that, that endorsement allows you to not only teach in the car, but to teach in the classroom as well. So as I mentioned, um, each of those classes are three credits. So for the behind the wheel, it's six credits. For the entire endorsement, it's nine. Um, but just for scheduling purposes, to note that that traffic safety, which is required for the endorsement, is just offered once a year. All right, our um, next question is from Gregory. How many students go to Grandview? Um, we currently have about 2,200 mm -hmm. students. Um, and about 1,800 full-time students, I believe. Um, and, and Grandview has, um, as, as we go around um, central Iowa and, and meet, with, um, meet with people, that's their, their first comment when they drive by um, East 14th and right, um, right by campus. They, they comment on um, how much we've grown just in the, in the last 10 years. And, and that's both with students and in our facilities. Um, we, we have fabulous students that come in from, from throughout the United States. Um, our athletics have, in just in the, the past few years have, have added programs and are very successful. Um, our, um, our football team, um, just four years in, in um, has already gone to the NAIA playoffs. Our wrestling team um, started the same year as the wrestling team, and they just won a national championship. Um, so it's, it's a great time to, to be at Grandview. We have a, a, a brand new um, residence hall that just opened up um, this, um, this fall. Um, our, the Rasmussen Center, um, an academic building that just opened up a, a couple years ago. So, um, so we're, we're, we're certainly growing um, both with students and in our facilities. And, and it's just a, it's a great time to, to be a part of, of Grandview, whether it's faculty or staff like ourselves or, or students. Okay. Our next question is from Heather and Jay. Um, I'm sorry, Gregory. Uh, Gregory's question is, can I play football there? Um, we do have a football team. They're mm -hmm. fantastic. Um, one requirement is that you need to be a full-time student. Um, we, I have had some adult mm -hmm. learners who are interested. Um, with our evening schedule, it's really tough with uh, practice. So usually the easiest way to make that work is to be a full-time day student, but absolutely. And they're, they're, they're great staff. Um, and uh, coach, um, head coach Mike Woodley, um, assistant coaches Joe Woodley and Austin Flynn um, are the uh, defensive and offensive coordinators, respectively. Um, they're just it's it's been it's been great to, to see their their um, rise in the, the football rankings and their success just four years in. Um, it's they they're a great um, a great staff um, to have. Um, Grandview's very lucky to, to, to have them. Next question is from Heather J. Is Grandview's tuition increasing at the same rate as other Iowa schools or is it raising at a faster slow or is it raising at a faster slower pace? What do you estimate tuition to cost in 10 years? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, our recent increase was a pretty modest one, um, especially with our CPAL rate. Um, it went from 307 to 319 per credit hour, so not a huge jump there. And then with traditional, went up about four, five hundred um, per semester. Yeah, I could, I could speak to that a little bit. Um, generally, um, Grandview's um, tuition rate increases are um, are more modest than than the other um, the other private schools in the state. And um, recently, um, with with the Public schools and their their increases have, have been um, have been much more significant. As far as um, as far as tuition ten years from now, that's interesting. Um, working in higher education, you hear that a lot. Whether it's it's friends or whoever, when when they ask or you know someone you bump into and um, they say, oh, I have a I have a ten year old. <laughs> how am I gonna How am I going to afford college? Um, you know, seven or eight years from now. 
and uh, it's it's an interesting debate uh, within higher education and and the increases in tuition and how long that can sustain itself and and really at, at this point in time there is there is no correct answer as far as um, as far as the the tuition and and um, the increases and and how long um, how long that will will, will um, go on. Okay. Looks like we have a couple more questions. Um, also to note, again, um, all of our answers are being um, fed on, on the feed so you can see our answers in kind of a condensed um, format as well so you can follow along and see what we've kind of discussed previously. Um, our next question is from Adrian. <clears throat> is there a program at Grandview that makes it unique compared to other schools? What does Grandview offer that isn't offered at other institutions? As far as programs, I can't say necessarily a certain program um, as an alum and now as a staff member. What I will say is that Grandview um, has a really close-knit, small community. So it's you're going to get someone on the phone. Um, you're going to get an answer. Um, you're going to get a more personable um, kind of contact with us. So that's something that I hear from the people that I recruit and from um, and even people that I've that I went to school with at Grandview. So that's something that's really great. And then our master's program, which um, Michael can kind of talk about, is a little bit different as well. Yeah, certainly. I, I like to think our um, our master's degree program is, is unique in that um, it's a master's of science and innovative leadership. It has three different tracks, business, education, and nursing. Um, and uh, and in all three tracks, the, the curriculum is set up in a way that um, it's encouraged and, and assumed that that um, our students will apply what they're learning in in their um, in their workplace setting. And I do want to add, we do have a two plus two program for our paralegal <coughs> program. If you get your paralegal associate's degree at DMAC, um, we have a really great um, program where you can seamlessly transfer into Grandview and you get your bachelor's in that field. So that's something that's kind of nice that we offer as well. All right, our next question and final question is from Bethany. How many classes do I have to take to be a full-time student? In the CPAL program, the College for Professional and Adult Learning, um, our accelerated evening weekend program, um, you would take six, six, uh, six or more credits per eight-week session. Um, traditional semester is 16 weeks. So um, in a traditional semester, um, you would take 12 credits to be considered full-time and then um, uh, six or more, or six, I'm sorry, six to 11 uh, would be would be part-time in that program. All right. I think that ends our time. That closes it up. So we just want to thank everybody for um, tuning in, and um, we encourage you to reach out to us for any, any information that you need, um, any more detail, any questions. Um, like I kind of, like we talked about before, we've got um, flexible office hours, so if you're looking to come in and meet with someone, um, we also run tours through the summer, 